It is that time again. 1776, the organic coffee to brew a revolution. Brought you by Zanna Coffee. 1776 is the best organic and GMO-free coffee beans blend from around the world to amplify your senses and enhance love for life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Zanna Coffee brings you happiness in every cup. Fair Trade Certified Sustainable Organic Coffee. Free Zanna songs with every coffee bag. Get 1776 at www.zannacoffee.com www.zannacoffee.com Don't be cheap. Life is too short. 1776 <laughs> Here we go, guys and girls. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom on KTalks 1340 AM in the United States to the FM Network. Final hour. This is the hour about love, but also this is the hour about keeping and, you know, straightening things out. As you know, on the show, we have a complete freedom of speech. You want to come here and say that you have some ideas about me or something that you don't like about me? You're welcome. I'll ask you, of course, to keep a private life away from anybody. We are talking about here politics. Talking about things that are supposed to be common things that, uh, you know, they are common interest. You know, I don't want to know, know about your mom or about other personal things, your girlfriends or things like that. But somebody has something to say, I welcome you. I'm not going to censor you. Of course, I give you the chance to talk. Then I'll give you my two sentence opinion. But more important, if you bring somebody else up in this conversation, let's say you have some allegations or even just some opinions, Okay. We are not here to accuse anybody. We are not here even to judge anybody. It's just a radio show after all. But let's say you have some opinions about somebody. You know you know the way I operate. I let you talk. I invite you also here. I welcome you. But also I need, I must give the opportunity to the person that you bring into this conversation to at least to face the opinions, you want to call them, allegations, accusations, whatever. To make it more specific, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I had a caller that also is a friend. You know, I know him very well. His name is Ken Rhodes from Michigan, who brought up an article uh, by the late uh, William Cooper, who is, uh, was, excuse me, his dad, uh, radio, talk radio host, a political activist, and also a book author. And uh, he mentioned in this article that uh, somehow he had some information that uh, my guest that I had here a few weeks ago, Mr. Gary Hunt, who is a journalist, independent reporter, and uh, he was somehow involved, or somehow he was the Joe Doe number four in this, uh, let's say, government conspiracy at Oklahoma City with Timothy F. Gay. Now, as I said, you want to read that article? I already gave you my opinion about that. Uh, that's something I wish Mr. Cooper was still alive for many reasons, because at that point, you know, I would like to ask him, how did you get this information? Okay. But at the same time, now I would like to bring back Mr. Gary Hunt, that I'm sure he has something to say about it. And that's the spirit of the show. Uh, Mr. Hunt, Gary, are you there? Yes, I am. All right. How uh, are you, Luca? Pretty good. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. By the way, I know you're busy, a lot of things going on. And uh, but I, I had to brought you, bring you back because this, this is important. Also for me, it's a question of a little bit of honor. Somebody calls somebody's name, uh, not main name, but you know, they bring you in a conversation. You have a chance to, you must have a chance to rebuke this conversation with facts. What do you think about these allegations from this uh, late article by uh, William Cooper that somehow, for what I read, uh, you said that you were involved in some sort of a conspiracy with the government as an informant during the Oklahoma well. City? John Doe 4 was supposed to be a co-conspirator of uh, Timothy McVeigh, not of the government. Uh, yeah. But then <laughs> the, there's mixed emotions on McVeigh. Uh, yeah, exactly. I corresponded with McVeigh the last couple of months of his life and wow. uh, on, on my webpage. And I've got what's called, in fact, if you do a Google search for McVeigh's forum, you'll see what he sent me to go public with. Wow. And uh, he exp there's a, le uh, a couple uh, essays and a letter, and he explains why he bombed the raw building and all that. Uh, you know, people said, well, he'll, he'll at allocution when he is sentenced, he'll say he's innocent, but he didn't. Uh, you know, he's quite stoic, and he's he was willing to take responsibility. And then other people said, well, they didn't really kill him. Well, the witnesses seem to think they killed him. But um, so the, all kinds of conspiracies grew out of this. 
But uh, to answer your question about uh, what Bill Cooper would probably say mm -hmm. is I happened to be listening on the radio. I was traveling across country at the time, and I was listening on the radio to the Bill Cooper show. And um, Linda Thompson was his guest, and they were talking. And Linda Thompson had found some video footage of two people walking away from the still-smoking Marab building. And one of them looks quite a bit like me. In fact, my wife, uh, when she first saw it, she said, he looks like you, but I didn't see it until I got back down to Oklahoma City later. Uh, it was uh, May or June when I finally got down to Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went there at the request of a number of people that had responded to that picture. But she was talking to Bill that day, and he sh she said, I have proof that Gary Hunt... Uh, was part of the conspiracy. We've got video footage of him walking away from the building. And uh, so they just picked a number. I don't know why number four, but uh, I became John Doe number four at that time. That's wow. the, the background of, of the John Doe four. Just because one uh, person saw somebody look like you. That's pretty much the story, right? But, right. And he did look quite a bit like me, except he, except he had more belly than me and less hair than I do now. So... Mm. Uh, and he didn't walk like me. I'm a surveyor, so you know I walked through swamps in Florida for many years, and and I've got a sturdy walk. And this guy had a real casual walk, and there were subtle little differences. But I, when I when I say I went to Oklahoma City, I was down invited down there by Glenn Wilburn, who's uh, uh, stepdaughter uh, Edie Smith or daughter-in-law or something. Edie Smith lost two children in in the bombing, and. Uh, he had seen the footage and he had invited me down the defense team had uh, mcveigh's defense team had invited me down i dealt primarily with richard reyna uh jd cash a writer uh pat briley who was drunk that day that I, we all met at uh wilburn's house and a few other people uh had invited me down i stopped by media bypass magazine on the way down to answer their questions and uh you know, after I, Glenn Wilburn met me, he ran this footage over and over and again, and this is the first time I'd ever seen it. Um, and that's when I noticed, well, the guy looks a lot like me. He wears a vertical blue stripe uh, long sleeve shirt, which I wear in the winter. And uh, uh, he was thin on top, thinner than I am, as I say, and his belly hung well, uh, well over his belt, which mine didn't at the time. It's beginning to now, but this is 25 years uh, 23 years later. Wow. Um, so question. So, you were there in the same time at uh, Oklahoma City. I'm just curious. I, I'm learning all these things from you, by the way. Thank the you. The first sharing. time that I recall going to Oklahoma City was uh, May, or maybe it was June. It was after the Oklahoma City bombing. Mm -hmm. The building had been uh, demolished and very little remained of it. Why? Uh, Why do you think they did that? I mean, this is some kind of disturbing, normally, it's evidence. And I found that kind of a similarities also with the Well, the, the you know, there's buildings. different kinds of evidence. What kind of evidence? When you've got decaying body parts and the potential for disease, do you leave the building up or do you take it down? What evidence are we talking about might exist in there? Well, I know that there was a local news, and I played this few times on the show, that as the, the uh, let's say, during the first few minutes of this, uh, let's say, uh, criminal act, they were saying there are still uh, explosive found in the building. There were still explosive found in the buildings. Few times from several local news that they never were really play on national news. Yeah, so I always wonder right. who can put explosive okay. into the okay. buildings. The, I'm sure the local news are experts at uh, 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 explosives, but let me explain that because I was watching the footage like everybody else at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, for a, a fellow out of Phoenix, Richard Shero, uh, I spoke to after he got back. Now he went up independent of the government and did some investigation. Mm -hmm. But everybody says there's no investigation because they wouldn't let the press in what qualifies the press to be investigators well i say first of all not just the press the fact that they were the same news coming from the government that they found bombs in explosive no bomb. no no let me explain that then this is what i got from cheryl when he mm -hmm. got there first the batf uh, had a a uh, model of a i think it was a mace missile i don't recall what kind of missile it was just a display a mace missile is about 18 feet long mm -hmm. but they had a little model of it in their their room and it was found in the debris there was a burnt fire extinguisher that somebody thought was a bomb so the the firemen that were in there 
Wow. Uh, if they saw anything that uh, they thought might be a bomb, they were advised to be careful. And it's understandable. Maybe there are more bombs. So every time they found something, they evacuated the building. The bomb crew went in. And at least three times, objects were taken out and put in the wicker basket and hauled away. Mm -hmm. Question now, is there's that no report that any of those were bombs, though. It was just the, the, the caution that was imposed on the, the, the rescue people or the people going into the building to see if there were any living uh, people or, or things like that. So mm -hmm. it's not uh, what, just because the press says, and just because they put something in the wicker basket doesn't mean it's a bomb. No, no, I don't mean that everything that comes out of the box or the TV, I believe it, but there is a point though. There were a lot of things that really made it no sense. For example, uh, I mean, this, I'm now I'm divert. You know, the main reason why I want you here to say your opinion, or at least defend yourself from whatever, uh, let's say, opinions they had about you, and that's the main thing. But since you're bringing up, bringing up uh, Oklahoma City bombing, and I've been studying a little bit the case, and uh, maybe I don't have the experience you have, but I have two eyes and two ears, and I watch at least uh, different type of documents. One thing that really always made me completely, um, I don't know, perplexed, uh, and I wasn't me talking. I'm talking about several, let's say, experts. For example, generals out there. They have a lot of, uh, let's Vin say... Partain, yeah. right? Yeah, probably yeah, one okay. of them. Let's talk about him because I looked into into uh, what he put out. Now, Ben Partain was in the Air Force, and he's an expert at aerial bombing. Mm -hmm. Aerial bombing is plane bombs usually weighing a ton or more, 500 pounds a ton, 2,000-pound two, bombs, uh, uh, 1200 pound bombs you know the stuff we used in vietnam uh they fall from great heights and when they hit go through the roof of a building mm -hmm. the only exit point in that building when th that big bomb hits the bottom and goes off detonates is upward and so the motion in that uh situation is uh, uh pushing outward so you truly believe that there was just a Timothy Mevgay uh, disgruntled? Well, uh, well, let me let me continue about Partain. Mm -hmm. Early on, now, unfortunately, in, in the fax days back then, uh, I was using thermal paper, and I had some cheap thermal paper, but I was faxed a, uh, and I'd, I'd like to find it again, and if anybody out there has, has got a better copy of it, mm -hmm. some people had bond paper uh, fax machines, but he put out a formula for the brissance of an explosion. Mm -hmm. And so I used that formula, but now when he used the formula, he said the bomb was 50 feet from the building. In fact, it was uh, eight feet plus four feet of planter. It was only 12 feet from the building, not 50 feet. And the dissipation of the brissance or the velocity of an explosion mm -hmm. dissipates rapidly. In 50 feet, it's negligible. And so he's saying from 50 feet away, it couldn't possibly cause that damage. But then using his formula at 12 feet, mm -hmm. it was a much, and I don't remember the numbers, but it was a much higher uh, br uh, brissance. Okay. Now, let's go back to the explosion, too. In this case, McVeigh uh, had described to uh, oh, the other guy that, not uh, uh, the brother, but another guy that uh, went to prison that lived in uh, western Ar Arizona out in the borough country, uh, his wife, in testimony, described that McVeigh, while he was there, took some soup cans and laid them out in a triangle. And he says, if I ignite this first one, and then just milliseconds later, do the next two, and then milliseconds after that, do the next three, like, you know, bowling pins, that the first one begins pushing the, the other five barrels into the building, then the second to explode, prepare filling the third one, uh, fourth and fifth one into the building. And so now I get my explosion inside of the bu bu building and all the force is going that way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the, the description that's in the uh, book, The American Terrorist by two newsmen who M McVeigh gave permission, he indicated to me that he had given permission to them to publish the book after his death. And he describes then the making of the bomb, but not the detonation of the book. Maybe the newsman didn't understand it or chose not to put it in the book, but he discussed it with this guy's wife. So now we've got this explosion going into the building, and it didn't blow out. It blew up. It, 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 a massive concussion. It's an air movement bomb. Uh, I don't remember. Air, air, aerothermal or aero something, but that's a, a moves a lot of air, more than an HE. HE is to destroy things, but that kind of bomb uh, moves massive amounts of air. And so we've got a building that's built earthquake style. The the bottom three floors of the build, uh, 
the bottom three floors of the building. The basement and the next two floors are very rigid construction. On top of that, the additional store floors flexible construction to withstand earthquakes because it's an earthquake area. And we'll get to the earthquake, uh, the seismograph in a minute, mm -hmm. too. I didn't mention but, that, uh, but I'm glad you brought it up. Anyway, at least I, I don't want to... This is something was mostly. I will talk back about Oklahoma. I will make. Uh, I will do a, a dedicated show, and of course, I will bring the other side. And you're welcome to bring your side if you want to, or anybody else who wants to say that. Uh, well, I, I'd be glad to explain yeah. what my research. But yeah. let me suggest if you go to my web page and uh, look up OKC bombing, you'll see mm -hmm. two seismographs, not one, and it mm -hmm. explains, as uh, Mr. Brown explained to me. Uh, that uh, there were two, he, he, <laughs> when I talked to Brown, he said, uh, I said, everybody says there were two explosions and he said, uh, in this tone. I never said there were two explosions. I said there were two events. And so mm -hmm. I asked him what events were. He said, well, one travels in the, the subsurface strata and the other one travels on the surface. And one travel, I don't remember which one, one travels faster than the other. So when there's something like that explosion in Oklahoma City, one arrives there before or the other, and if you look closely at the seismographs, they're identical except one. The second one is weaker. It's smaller, but it's identical in shape. Okay. Please, as I said, I don't want to, this is, uh, I just brought it up. I'm glad I didn't know what you knew about uh, uh, Oklahoma. I'm glad now that I know your position, at least, you know, it's good to know. I always challenge myself. I don't have dogma in anything, so I'm always open to uh, debate or at least uh, relearn things. Uh, right now, for me, of course, the is, is evidence, or at least what I was able to call evidence uh, from different news and articles, things like that, I really believe that uh, Mr. Timothy M.F. Gay, it wasn't alone into this, and my opinion was just a part, so at least part of the show, but it wasn't the main show. Pretty much he like wasn't alone, but he wasn't a patsy. No, well, I did investigate it. I contacted the, the seismologist. I mm -hmm. contacted a number of people in Oklahoma City. Uh, when I investigate, I don't read somebody else's article and draw my conclusions from that. Oh, I understand. I go to the source. What, and, what do you know about it? What do you know about so it? I'll be glad about the, to come on and I would love that. discuss the Oklahoma City bombing with you in, in greater detail. More than me. You know, I have somebody that I had on my show that uh, is like, uh, he put a lot of effort and time producing a documentary about Oklahoma City. Maybe it would be great to have you both and you can all have uh, bring your facts. My other question, I have just briefly, I heard about that uh, some of the ATF agents, they were told to do not come, and many of them, they didn't come. What did you hear about that? Well, according to Shero, the ATF agents work out of the office, not in the office. Mm -hmm. The suits work in the office, the field men work out. They were in some town, a fire department, somewhere around Oklahoma City okay. giving bomb training, uh, BATF training to these people. But they're never in the office except the leader goes up and gets his instructions. So most of the, of the team that was out of there uh, doesn't even go in the office unless they have a good reason to. And so we only had two ATF agents and, and a secretary in the building. And that, that's all that's normally there in a business okay. day. I think this is, I'm so glad, seriously, that uh I found out this about you because at this point I would love, and I really mean it seriously, to know, uh, to have you on the show uh, with, uh, I forgot his name, he was on my show a couple years ago. He was the, the producer of uh, this latest documentary about Oklahoma City. And uh, I know he spent a lot of months, I, I think years on this project. And I would love to have you both, bring in both facts, because that people people deserve the facts that, that uh, at least they can judge and they can make their conclusion with uh, both sides. That's the spirit of the show. I'm not gonna just bring you my side or what I think, but I like to bring you, of course, the other side or the all sides, that's the idea. So anyway, I appreciate that, Gary, that's great. Uh, I want to give you two minutes, whatever you want to add. You know, at least I'm glad you had a chance to re rebuke to uh, Gary, excuse me, to, uh, what is his name? Um, uh, my gosh. Well, let Go me, ahead. let me, uh, I don't need two minutes uh, on this subject. Uh, in about 2012, finally, I decided to uh, contact somebody that I was with on uh, April 19th, 1995, and mm -hmm. I was not in Oklahoma City, okay. by the way. Now, uh, rather than me tell you who it was, we did a radio show in 2012, and if you go to my webpage, outpost-of-freedom.com, yes. near the top, you'll see a link to an MP3, which is, uh, Gary had exposed John Doe 4, I think, is the title of it. Now, it's long, but you need to listen to the whole thing, because there's a message in it. 
And you need to understand that message. So those that really want to know if I was John Doe 4, uh, when it gets to the, about the hour mark, you will find out who the witness was, okay. well-respected in the Patriot community. But you need to listen to the whole thing to, because it kind of lays out a problem in the uh uh, patriot community, which is false accusations. Mm -hmm. Okay, at least I, what I'll do, honestly, I will put the link uh, directly on my radio, on my website, Love Guns Freedom, to that interview. So that would make it even easier. I, I want people to have a chance to to go through the uh, all the information as, uh, as as good as possible. Okay, that's I think would be better too. Listen, any other thing you want to say about since the last time we talk? Uh, since uh, I know that the judge in Oregon at least was uh, kind of mad at you. Any other news? Well. I think she's right now she's mad at the U.S. attorney. I'm sorry, the U.S. shyster office. They called me a blogger, so I call them sh shysters now. Okay. And when they call me a journalist, which I consider myself to be and other people consider myself to be for the 24 years I've been doing it, uh, that if they can call me a blogger, I can call them shysters, and okay. I do. But right. uh, that uh, is on the blog uh, and uh, the most recent article, uh, Tilting at Windmills uh, Redux. Okay. Uh, kind of explains where the what the current status is perfect lisa thank you very much i appreciate it and i really i'm going to work on this uh, uh a very interesting uh segment that's going to be an hour hopefully you know to have you and to have uh the producer of uh, of this documentary that was a fa what a, a fable lies i forgot anyway some sort of a noble lies, I guess, or something like that. Anyway, I'm sure you know the documentary. Probably you watch it too. But anyway, regardless. well, I, I've heard about it. I don't bother watching okay. those because generally they're made up of news broadcasts, okay. and but, I, you know, I don't know that they investigated it rather than grab stuff off the internet, which is why John Doe four is so common. There's, a, we found at one point over forty thousand occurrences of John Do, Gary Hunt John Doe four. Okay, but you know, I want to give. I, I as I said, we'll find out. Uh, what he did, in my opinion, what he did, this documentary, I watched it, it was kind of uh, even deeper than just going on the internet, but we'll figure it out. Listen, I want to thank you again, and uh, what I say, good luck for your journalist job. I really appreciate what you're doing with these uh, chronicles of uh, Burns, okay? Okay. Thank you very much, Gary. Thank you. That was Gary Hunt, and I really appreciate it, by the way. As I said, I mean it. When somebody said that, hey, I have facts and I have my own re uh, reasoning, and evidence that um, all the things that I believe, or at least what my research brought me, because I don't have a belief like a dogma. As I said, this is not a dogma. I don't have any dogma, okay? At least when it comes to these things. So I'm open to listen, and I would like to bring, of course, him and the other side. As I, 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 and I, right now I forgot the name, but I know that I had him on my show a couple of years ago. He was the producer of the latest documentary about Oklahoma City. My opinion was it done a good job, but as I said, you know, I like to challenge him. With maybe Gary uh, Hunt can give him some good challenges with reasoning and facts. All right, guys, this is the spirit of the show. As you can hear, nothing it's in set in stones. We always want to, let's say, challenge everything. That's the idea. Okay, I uh, appreciate your help. I appreciate your support. Please, if you want to keep this format, complete freedom of speech, I appreciate you really that you can help me out. Go to www.zanna. Z A N N A dot U S. You can download any of my songs. You can find my new ebook, uh, lyrics and poems. Uh, you can, of course, also find the link to Zana Coffee and everything else I do. Don't forget the CCW classes. If you're in Arizona, I think you're going to love them. All right. God's willing, I will talk to you next summer. Ciao. Do you want social justice? Now I give you social justice. The Zana way. Don't trade on us. The Freedom Rifle by Zana. The most affordable military-grade semi-automatic AR-15 rifle in M4 configuration. Chambered in 223 Wild, they can shoot both 5.56 NATO and 223 Remington. Four minutes of angle for just $499. Made in the USA. Get your Freedom Rifle now. We need every law-abiding American armed with knowledge and at least one military rifle ready to defend good against evil. With every Don't Trade On Us rifle, you will get free parchment replica of the United States Constitution, free digital CD Don't Trade On Us, free ebook How To Become A Rifleman, free t-shirt Slaves Are Never Armed, I Am Not A Slave, free 30 rounds magazine were allowed by the law, free laser engraved ejection port Don't Trade On Us for just $499. Go to www.freedomrifle.com 
www.freedomrifle.com